Welcome everyone, I'm Laura Shu. This video covering different ways of showing before and after in Lightroom for all of your work or various parts of your work is one of 61 videos and over 12 and a half hours of training in my Lightroom 5 The Fundamentals and Beyond video series, which is available on my website at laurashu.com. Any references I make to other videos during this one refer to that video series. I'm going to cover working with history, using the backslash key, using the YY compare mode, turning off particular panels and tools, and changing the definition of before and after. I've worked on this photo a lot, and I want to compare my before and after. The first thing I can do is go back in history. So I'm going to click to expand the left-hand panel, and I'll collapse the right-hand panel for now. Now my history, as I mentioned in the orientation to develop module, has been building from the moment I started working on this photo. So I've done many things to this photo. If I click back on the import, this is where I started. I worked on the tones. Then I started shifting individual colors so you can see the sky gets darker and, and more blue. I fixed the perspective on the photo. I cropped it. Then I decided to convert it to black and white, and I worked a little bit more on the black and white mix. Then I added a vignette, and then I added some grain. So this is accumulating going upward. And then I'm finally at this point here at the top. So to see before and after, I can always simply click back on any step that I've done before. And then I can click back on the top step to get back to after. Clicking back on the top step is critical. Often people click back in history to see what they were doing. And then they go ahead and go do additional develop work. So I'm going to increase exposure, but watch the history panel as I do it. Because I have this earlier step highlighted, as I increase exposure, I lost all of the work after the step that was highlighted. If you realize it right away, of course, you can hit Ctrl or Command Z. That will undo my exposure step and bring back everything that I lost. So click back in history to see what you did and then click back on the top step to continue working. So that's one way to look at before and after. Another way that I've already mentioned a number of times and I really like is to hit the backslash key above the enter or return key on US keyboards. I like to toggle them on and off. Now I want to give you a hint so you can avoid some frustration. You know I'd like to use the spot removal tool to get rid of these power lines. So I'm going to click on the spot removal tool and do you see how my mouse is not the spot removal tool? It's like, well, I clicked on it. Is it broken? What's going on? Well, your tools are not going to work and your sliders are not going to work if you're in before mode. So if things aren't working, check up here to see if you're in before mode. And if so, hit the backslash key again to get out of before mode. Now my mouse is in fact the spot removal tool and I could do that work. Another way to look at before and after on particular parts of your work is to use the switches that are on every panel except the basic panel as well as on every tool except the crop tool. So for example, I'm going to go ahead and come down here to the lens corrections panel where I did a fair amount of work and at the top of the panel there's this little switch here. A lot of people never discover this because it's so small. But if I click that switch it turns off all the work I did with the lens corrections panel. So if I want to see before and after on the work with this panel, I can just click to toggle this panel on and off. Now I can permanently turn off my lens corrections work by simply leaving the switch off. But I like to use it just to compare before and after. So that's in just every panel except the basics panel. I've also showed you that it's in here and it's also in these other tools as well. So that's very handy. Finally, you can use the YY button here to compare your photos next to each other. Now if I click on YY once, I get them side by side. If I keep clicking on it, I get additional views. I can also get to these views through the drop down here. I tend to just like the conventional side by side. You can actually work in this mode. So I'm working on the after, but I can always be comparing it to the before. So I could come over here, for example, and increase the exposure. And you'll see that the after is my main photo. It is reflecting the work that I'm doing. I'm going to hit Ctrl or Command Z to undo that step. Now the definition of before 
is when you first imported the photo into Lightroom. So this is what it looked like out of my camera. Sometimes that's not the definition that you want. Maybe I want the before to be right after I converted it to black and white. I'm going to go ahead and expand the history panel here. So I'm going to scroll down and look for the step where I converted this photo to black and white. So I want this to be the new before. I'm not going to left click on this and highlight it. I'm going to right click or with a one button mouse on a Mac you control click and I'm going to say copy history step settings to before. So this step now becomes my new comparison, my new before that I'm comparing the current version to. Now if you accidentally left click on this, you still can right click, copy history step settings to before. But after you do that, you need to make sure you go back up to the top and click on your top step so that that's the after and that's what you're working from. If you forget and you stay back here with this highlighted, you're losing all of your work since then. So again, just right click on the step, copy history step settings to before. So now I've redefined what before is. I also have some buttons down here related to before and after. So this first one it copies the before settings to after. If I compare before and after and I go, whoa, I can't believe I really did what I did. I really just want to go back to how the photo looked like over here. That's when I would use this copy before settings to after. So I'm essentially starting fresh from whatever the before step was, whether it was back at the beginning at import or it was when I converted it to black and white. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that, Control or Command Z. The next one, copy after settings to before, basically makes this the new benchmark that's going to sit over here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the second button here. So this becomes the new before. And of course, as I continue to work, I'll simply have that as my comparison. So it's really just a shortcut to coming over here and making this last step, meaning the current step, the new before by right clicking on it. If I change my mind and I now want before to be way back when I imported it, I'll simply go to history and I'll right click on the import step and say copy history step settings to before. Now this last one, swap before and after settings, is going to make this the benchmark but is going to allow me to work from this point. So I'm going to click on that and you'll see that it in fact swaps. So now I'm working on this color photo, but I've got this for a comparison. But frankly, I've never actually used that but in my own workflow, but you may find some use for it. So that may be getting too complicated for some people, but know that this advanced functionality is out there. The main thing is hit the Y, Y button to see before and after next to each other or the shortcut Y. The shortcut Y again will take you out of before and after mode. So you've got YY, you've got the backslash key, you've got switches on the panels, you've got history, you've got lots of ways to look at before and after. This concludes the lesson on before and after. If you've learned a lot from this nine minute video, imagine how much you'll learn from my complete video series, Lightroom 5 The Fundamentals and Beyond. It's over 12 and a half hours of training on 61 videos for both beginners and experienced users. It teaches you everything you need to know about organizing and managing your photos, editing your photos, and then sharing your photos through export, through email, and through social media. Click here to check it out on my website. And while you're there, sign up for newsletter updates so you're the first to hear about new tutorials and videos. Finally, if you're on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm Laura Shu.